Hello everyone. In this video series, we're diving into the manual web UI configuration of the HiFocus HF CPE01 for outdoor point-to-point -point connectivity using a PC or laptop. In our previous video, we showed you the auto-bridging method, which is a quick and easy setup. However, for those who need a more secure connection or if the auto-bridge isn't working as expected, this video will guide you through manually configuring these devices to set them up as an access point and client. This is the perfect guide for anyone looking to install a CCTV camera in a lift or elevator or extend internet connectivity from one location to another. With this setup, you can bypass complex cabling and enjoy a straightforward installation process. Whether you're enhancing surveillance coverage or ensuring reliable internet connectivity across challenging areas. To configure the CPE, start by powering it on and connecting the LAN cable from the CPE to your PC's LAN port. There are two methods to access the CPE through your PC. The first method involves using the provided power adapter to power the CPE directly, followed by connecting the LAN cable from the CPE to the PC's LAN port. The second method utilizes the PoE splitter, and then link the splitter's LAN port to the PC's LAN port. Finally, plug the provided DC adapter into the PoE splitter's DC port to power the CPE, completing the connection to your PC. With either method, you will be able to access and configure the CPE efficiently. Let's begin the configuration by setting up the first CPE as an access point, AP. To access the CPE web interface, you need to assign a static IP address to your PC LAN adapter. To do this, right-click on the Network icon in the System Tray or navigate to Network and Internet Settings. From there, select the Ethernet option to access your network settings. In the Ethernet settings, locate the IPv4 settings to enter the IP address. Set the IP address to 192.168.2.10 and the subnet mask to 255.255.255.0. This configuration will allow your PC to communicate with the CPE properly. Next, open a web browser, such as Chrome, Firefox, or Edge, and type the default IP address http colon slash slash 192.168.2.1 into the address field at the top of the browser window. Press enter to navigate to this address. The default username and password for the CPE are both admin, enter admin in both fields and then click the login button to access the quick setup of the CPE. Since we are using this CPE as a transmitter access point, you can easily enable that mode in the Quick Setup menu by choosing the AP option on the page. Then click the, the Next button to access the Wireless AP Settings page. Here, you can set the Wi-Fi SSID and password for the transmitter to securely connect with the receiving CPE. In the SSID field, enter a Wi-Fi name that is easily recognizable, incorporating relevant details like the block number, lift name, or area. For example, you might use block A underscore AP for cameras in block A. A descriptive SSID is particularly helpful for managing multiple cameras across different locations, making it easier to troubleshoot connectivity issues or access camera feeds. By choosing a clear SSID, you streamline setup and maintenance for your camera network. Select WPAPSK in the security field to set the password for this Wi-Fi. When creating this password, choose something strong yet memorable, as you will need it during the configuration of the receiving CPE. After making these selections, click the Next button, which will take you to a page to save your setup. Once the setup is completed, the CPE will reboot, which will take about 1 to 2 minutes. Once the CPE has rebooted, you can re-enter the login credentials to access the CPE and review your access point AP configuration. Note, depending on your internet modem or router connection, you may need to adjust the IP address if your home network uses a different IP series. Additionally, consider the settings of your DVR or NVR, as well as the IP camera network series, when planning your IP address configuration. For example, in our home network, where our router's IP address is 192.168.1.1, 
we will set the IP address of the access point to 192.168.1.230. This configuration can be done on the, the network page. Navigate to the LAN setup section, then enter the IP address of the access point, as well as the subnet mask and gateway that correspond to your home network's IP series. After entering the details, click the, the Save button to apply the new IP address to the access point CPE. By configuring the access point this way, you can easily access your CPE later without having to manually set the IP configuration of your PC's LAN. This allows for quick and convenient access to the CPE from any PC or laptop within your home network. That's it. The access point of the CPE is configured successfully. Now, let's prepare the second outdoor CPE to be configured as a client, receiver. Similar to the access point configuration, ensure that the LAN port of the client's CPE is connected to your PC or laptop. This connection will allow you to access the CPE's web interface for configuration. Once the client CPE is powered on and connected, you'll follow a similar process as before. Reassign your PC's LAN adapter to a static IP address that is compatible with the client CPE's default IP address. Typically, the default IP address for the client CPE is set as 192.168.2.1, so you might configure your PC to something like 192.168.2.10 with a subnet mask of 255.255.255.0. Open your web browser and enter the default IP address http colon slash slash 192.168.2.1 in the address field. Enter the default login credentials, username and password are both admin to access the CPE. Once logged in, navigate to the Quick Setup menu and select the option to configure the device as a client. Follow the prompts to set it up accordingly. On the Wireless Client Settings page, you can select and connect to the access point that is transmitting the Wi-Fi signal, allowing you to communicate wirelessly and extend your network. Start by toggling the Scan option to scan and retrieve a list of available Wi-Fi SIDs in your vicinity. From this list, Check the box next to the transmitter SSID that represents the access point you want the client CPE to connect to, and then click the Next button. Next, you will need to enter the Wi-Fi password for the transmitter access point in the designated field to authenticate the connection. After entering the password, click the Next button. The subsequent page will display the configuration settings you've selected for verification. You may be prompted to modify the CPE's IP address according to your home LAN network series. For instance, based on our router's IP series, we will set the client's CPE IP address to 192.168.1.240. Finally, to complete the process, click the Next button. The device will reboot, and once powered back on, it will be ready to connect with the access point, successfully establishing a wireless link to extend your network. Once you have completed the configuration, you can proceed to install the devices in their designated locations. Ensure that the access point, AP, is securely mounted in a location where it can effectively transmit its Wi-Fi signal, ideally with a clear line of sight to the client CPE. The client CPE should also be placed in an optimal position to receive the signal from the access point, allowing it to maintain a reliable connection with the network. After physically installing the devices, connect the access point to your home network. To do this, plug the LAN cable from the access point into your router or network switch. This connection will integrate the access point into your home network, allowing all connected devices to communicate with each other seamlessly. For your PC, ensure that the LAN IP address is set to obtain an IP address dynamically, using DHCP. This setting enables your PC to automatically receive an IP address from your home network's router. Once connected, you will be able to access all devices on the network, including both CPEs, for future setups or configurations. By facilitating this dynamic IP configuration, you ensure that your network remains flexible and that you can easily manage and access the devices as needed. This setup empowers you to maintain a well-connected, efficient network, capable of supporting your internet and device management needs.
you'll notice that the signal LED on each device will illuminate, confirming that the connection has been successfully established. When the signal LED on the access point, AP, is stable, it indicates that the device is functioning properly as the AP. In contrast, if the signal LED on the client device is blinking, it signifies that the client is actively receiving the signal from the access point. This visual feedback is essential for easy monitoring of the connection between the two devices, ensuring that your setup is functioning as intended. If you observe a stable LED on the AP and a blinking LED on the client, you can be confident that they are effectively communicating with each other, establishing a reliable and robust connection for your network. This confirmation allows you to trust that your devices are working together seamlessly to provide the connectivity you need. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing to our channel. Your support means a lot and helps us create more great content for you. See you in the next video.